Good morning. Welcome to the mock interview for the ITSM Process Consultant position. We'll be covering a range of topics related to IT service management. Let's get started. Can you introduce yourself and explain why you're interested in this ITSM Process Consultant role? Good morning. Thank you for having me here. I have a background in IT service management with certification in ITIL v4. I am passionate about optimizing IT processes to align with business objectives. And I believe that this role will allow me to leverage my skills to enhance the service delivery. I have a total of five to six years of experience in this field. And in my current company, I am leading uh, the ITSM part and taking care of all the ITSM practice in my company. How do you stay updated with the latest trends and best practices in ITSM? I am regularly attending the industry conferences, following ITSM blogs. In LinkedIn, there are various groups which I am following. There are some news, means there are some blogs where I can see the latest news related to ITSM. As well as I engage with professional networks to stay informed about uh, new methodologies and tools with respect to ITIL and ITSM. What are the phases of the ITIL lifecycle and how do they contribute to IT service management? Yes, yeah, sure. The ITIL lifecycle includes service strategy, service design, service transition, service operation, and continual service improvement. These are the five phases which are there. Each phase ensures that IT services are aligned with business needs, um, designed effectively, transitioned smoothly, and operated efficiently and finally improved continuously so by this way we will try to keep the professionalism at the top and our clients are very happy so that we are following the practices the best practices and uh, providing better results for them explain the difference between reactive and proactive problem management yeah sure you know reactive problem management focuses on resolving issues after they occur while proactive problem management involves identifying potential problems and preventing them before happening, okay? So the problem is not happened, but we are taking proactive measures here. In proactive management, we use techniques like uh, trend analysis, root cause analysis to anticipate and mitigate the risks. And I would say this is not an easy task. We have to take care of all the possible cases we have to deep dive into it, but if we get the result, that is a very benefiting for the organization. Because we are stopping something that could result in disruption of services before happening. Describe a situation where you applied ITIL principles to improve service delivery. Okay, uh, so in my current role, I applied ITIL's continuous service improvement principle to reduce incident resolution time by 25%. So it's not me specifically, but uh, our whole team, we all are responsible for this, okay? And that involves analyzing the incident trends, identifying bottlenecks, and implementing process improvements. And we are able to do this with the help of service now performance analytics, okay? Our client has all this, and through that, we have the uh, data of drill down things. We can deep dive into the data and come up with these trends. So this is one of the example where I have uh, you know, applied ITL principle and it definitely improves service delivery. What are the critical steps in the incident management process? So we are using ServiceNow uh, for incident management basically. Okay, it's complete incident management is uh, managed, configured and used uh, in ServiceNow only. And the incident management process includes identification, logging, uh, categorization, prioritization, diagnosis, escalation, and finally resolution and closure of the issue of the incidents. The goal here is to restore normal service operations as quickly as possible. That's what our whole team is up to and uh, we are getting good results. Can you walk us through a successful change management process you've implemented? Yep. So being a process owner here in ITSM, uh, I have done various implementations. So let me give you an example where I have implemented a change management process uh, that involves assessing the change request, obtaining approvals from uh, CAB, you know, change advisory board, and finally conducting a post-implementation review 
to ensure changes were successful and there is no risk associated with it. And finally, we did it all in very transparent way and 100% transparency was there, whatever we are doing. How do you handle conflicting priorities in incident management? Yes, uh, in real time, we got various uh, situations where we see conflicting priorities in incident management, okay? When we faced with the multiple incidents of the same priority. So when we faced multiple incidents with the same priority, I assess, first of all, the business impact and urgency for each incident. Based on that impact and urgency analysis, I then allocate resources based on these factors, okay? Ensuring that the critical services are restored first, but rest are also being taken care of. What is the role of asset management in ITSM and how do you ensure effective asset tracking? Okay, uh, you know, asset management involving tracking and managing IT assets that will help in optimizing the cost, reducing the cost and optimizing the usage. So in this, I ensure effective asset tracking by using a configuration management database that is CMDB to record asset details and regularly auditing the database for accuracy. So we also have service now discovery on. Okay, so because of that also, we are getting a lot of data which is there, which is accurate and we are managing it in CMDB. And finally, that data is helping, you know, updating the asset as well. Describe a time when you improved asset management processes in an organization. So I would say in this case, uh, we had uh, done various integrations. Uh, once I implemented a centralized asset management system that is integrated with our CMDB. Okay, so this allowed us to track asset more efficiently, reducing the asset loss and finally making informed decisions about asset upgrades. What is a service level agreement, SLA? And how do you ensure SLA adherence? Okay, uh, so an SLA is a formal agreement between a service provider and the consumer, or you can say customer, that defines the expected service levels. You can say it is the scope of the service which is defined here. So in my current organization, I ensure SLA is being added, okay, by regular monitoring service performance matrices, identifying the issues, identifying the bottlenecks and resolving it as soon as possible. And finally, implementing the corrective actions whenever necessary. Can you explain the difference between a service level agreement, SLA, an underpinning contract, UC, and an operational level agreement, OLA? Yeah, sure. An SLA is between service provider and a customer outlining the service expectations, whereas a underpinning contract or UC is between service provider and the third party supplier, which is supporting the SLA. And lastly, we have OLA, that is operational level agreement. It is an uh, agreement between different teams within the service provider to support the SLA. So finally, or ultimately, we can say all these things are supporting SLAs so that the service is delivered efficiently and on time. How do you communicate ITSM process changes to stakeholders? So this is one area where I have to be very sure, I have to be very accurate. And for that, I use a clear, concise language to explain the benefits and the impact of the changes. And I also engage stakeholders early in the process to ensure their needs are considered and to build support for the changes. In my current company, the stakeholders are very well informed about all the technical changes or the functional behavioral changes, which is expected. And they are supporting us in whatever way they can. And that is really helping us in going forward and, uh, you know, adhering the SLAs and performing services up to the very best level. Describe a situation where you had to negotiate with stakeholders to implement an ITSM process change. Yes, uh, you know, when you are at this position, you have to negotiate a lot. For example, in my previous role, I had to negotiate with the department heads to implement a new incident management process. They were not ready to make changes. They were very, you know, underconfident about any new process being implemented. So what I did, I presented the data showing how the change would improve the service delivery and reduce the downtime. 
and that really help us in gaining their support and trust. We have to be very patient when you talk to the customers, when you talk to the stakeholders, because they are non-technical person. They are only interested whenever they see any benefit of their process. So we design the things in such a way, in such a simple manner, so that they understand the benefits up to the 100% level or more than you know uh, what they were expecting previously. So this really helped us. I would say this is a kind of negotiation here. What role does automation play in ITSM? And how have you used automation tools in your previous roles? So I would say this is a time of automation. And everywhere you see automation, you see in service now, we have various workflows, uh, various flows are there, flow designer. And, and through that, we are automating up to a very high level, right? You see integrations are being automated into a very fast way using integration hub. So I would say automation in ITSM increase efficiency and reduce errors by automating repetitive tasks. Lot of lot, lot and lot of time is being saved when we do automation and not do the repetitive task by ourselves. We got more time to innovate. Okay. So I have used automation tools to streamline incident response and change management processes. And that had uh, significantly improved the service delivery speed, quality, and the quantity as well. Can you explain how you assess the need for automation in ITSM processes? Yes, I assess the need for automation by identifying repetitive tasks, analyzing process bottlenecks, and evaluating the potential return on investment from automating these processes. Describe a difficult decision you made in an ITSM role and how you arrived at that decision. Yeah, sure. I would love to. Uh, once I had to decide whether to implement a major system update during a critical business period, I had a discussion with my manager and uh, he said it's your call. Do the analysis and come up with some solution. So in that case, I evaluated the risk of the downtime against the benefit of improved security and performance. After my initial diagnosis and after consulting with the stakeholders, I have decided to proceed with the update during the scheduled maintenance window and finally ensuring the minimal impact on the business operations. See the transparency which I showed there, I discussed the impact, I discussed uh, uh, the benefits which we're getting from that update directly with the stakeholders will really help us. It uh, built a proper type of you know confidence between both of us. And finally, after all the agreements, after all the approvals, we got this uh, go ahead and uh, and thank God it was successful and uh, the team was very happy. How do you approach root cause analysis in problem management? So to do root cause analysis in problem management, I use tools like uh, five ways method and a fishbone diagram to identify the root cause analysis of problems. And it involves systematically questioning the symptom of the problem until uh, the underlying cause is identified. How do you measure the success of ITSM processes and what metrics do you use? Uh, so in that case, uh, I engage with business stakeholders to understand their needs and goals. Then I design ITSM process that support business objectives. Uh, so to measure the success of ITSM processes, we generally use matrices such as incident resolution time, customer satisfaction scores, and change success rates to measure the process success. So these matrices help in identifying areas for improvement and track the effectiveness of the changes which we have implemented. Describe a time when you identified an opportunity for process improvement and implemented changes. So this is definitely process optimization is a part of my job role, okay? Uh, so let me give you one example. One time I noticed that our incident uh, resolution times were higher than expected, okay, due to inefficient escalation procedures. So we had gone through the escalation procedures one more time with client, with my team, and finally uh, I proposed and implemented a revised escalation procedure, or you can say process, that reduced the resolution time by 30%. And it is a huge margin, 30% is huge. So the client, after seeing the result, were very happy and uh, we are trying to do such things after careful analysis of the data which is coming uh, from various reports, 
performance analytics and all okay so just keep an eye on that and you will find something uh, which you can improve later on what do you think are the most significant challenges facing ITSM today and how would you address them uh, so the key challenges includes uh, keeping up with the technology advancement you know there is a lot of changes in the technology and it is uh, happening on daily basis rapidly right so doing that is very key challenge and finally managing the complex service ecosystem so in this case i would address these by staying informed yeah i have no other way i have to keep myself updated with respect to new technologies and finally we have to engage with stakeholders to ensure itsm process remain aligned with the business need because it may be possible that one day we have all the latest you know technology with us but the business is not going up it means the alignment is not good so we have to take care of all these things this alignment this balance is very important here in business need as well as in adopting the technology so this is the main challenges i think in itsm market today can you discuss the importance of knowledge management in itsm knowledge management is crucial as it ensures that itsm teams have access to the information they need to resolve the incident efficiently as well as make informed decisions because i would say a good knowledge management is inversely proportional to the number of incidents it means if you have very good knowledge management in place the number of incident will be less and vice versa if your knowledge management is not good it is you know uh, just uh, outdated or not up to date something like that in that case the people have no idea of what to do whenever an issue arises or something happen and even for the same thing every candidate every customer or you know uh, the client is going to create incidents and waste resources and all so keep your knowledge management up to date and accessible to the employees to the clients so that it will be used up to maximum level and it reduce and it reduces the number of incidents the number of issues arised knowledge management also involves documenting processes maintaining a knowledge base and sharing the best practices so you have to maintain it in such a way how do you see the role of itsm evolving in the future and how will you adapt to these changes yeah sure as i mentioned earlier that uh, ai and automation are these are the two things which are very much being involved in coming future so i would say itsm will continue to evolve with advancement in ai and automation and i definitely have to adapt by staying up to date on these technologies and integrating them into itsm processes to enhance efficiency and service quality thank you for your thoughtful responses do you have any questions for us thank you so much for considering me i would love to be a part of this organization and uh, yeah i'm looking forward to it thank you so much